Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft server. We're flying past Mumbo's glorious base and heading over to the Hexabee because I had many many comments in my last video telling me to strip, okay? <laughs> strip all of the logs in here of course and we don't actually have a proper entrance to get into this place from the outside. I just come in through the nether portal there. So, you'll see that there is a terracotta pattern down here on the floor. I had a comment suggesting that I do that. And so I just built the first thing that came to mind and I picked out these two colours. And I think it works really great. The only thing this room is missing is maybe like a trim of stairs to hide some of this prismarine. But anyway, look at this. The rooms have had their logs stripped and they look about ten times better. And just about everyone agreed in the last video that we should... Uh, we should strip these logs. Although, is it the last video? Because here's the deal. Christmas is coming closer and I am running out of my free time to record. And so I have to just kind of do things when I can. And what I really want to do today is play mini golf. And I'm going to be recording this before I do ZF's Is That Sheep Looking At Me? So the last episode might have actually been that. And if you didn't watch it, you should definitely go and check it out. Because ZF's Is That Sheep Looking At Me mini game is amazing. And I enjoyed it ever so much last time. Now if this episode happens to come out first, I know it's so confusing, right? <laughs> uh, then you got that to look forward to. But anyway, the nether portal, let me show you where this goes to. It's really not exciting at all, unfortunately. It's just this little divot in the wall, but it's right next to my portal over there. Anyway, let's head in this direction because we're going to go to the Christmas area and play some mini golf. Every time we fly into this area, I find myself overwhelmed with inspiration. It is so gorgeous here, and it's been over a year in the making. We're finally going to play a round of mini golf. Now, originally, we set out to have 12 in total, and we've ended up with 10 holes, which is fine. There was also this difficulty system based on how the plots were more sloped than others, but I can't remember what my plans for that were. I'm just going to play this with the basic rules of mini golf. And do we need a refresher? Maybe. Red's carpet means obstacles. Lime has ice underneath, so the ball you throw is going to slide over it. And yellow equals function. This often means rerouting your, your ball to another location and it getting spun out by a dispenser. Uh, this is the flag. This is our objective to get the golf ball into the hole. And then orange represents the starting pit. And then these are just examples of uh, obstacles you might encounter along the way. Now me playing this mini golf course is going to be a little bit different than you might have expected. We're going to take full advantage of the replay mod. And on occasion for some of the more simpler holes, after we've discussed strategy and what we think we're going to try and do, we'll use the replay mod and it should hopefully make things a little bit more interesting overall. But most of the holes are actually going to just play first person which is what we're going to do for the very first hole which was one that I made. Now being a content creator I record clips and then I listen to them back as I'm editing and I'm thinking yeah replay mod will make this a little bit more interesting will it because it's not very interesting. No the mini golf is amazing we're just we're just adding a little bit more spice to it anyway. When I made this first one right here, I wanted it to be a very simple hole, but also introduce you to the uh, basic elements. As you can see, it's got all of them, really. The obstacles, the, the yellow wall for the function, and the starting pit right here. There's actually not a crazy amount of elements, really, then, is there? But I think what we're going to do here is just aim this thing uh, all the way along so we don't hit the red obstacle. Now, I built this so long ago, I don't really remember my strategy for this entirely. Now, we can see where it is. We've kind of got to stand just right about there and take our next shot. So that's pretty much the rules of mini golf, right? You pick it up where it landed and then you take your next one. And so with two shots, we've done that. And I hope the redstone still works. It does. And it's dispensed it somewhere over there. Let's hop around. Okay. So for this last bit, I think I might want to aim for the obstacle so I can take a shot across that gap. It could be very risky though, so it kind of looks like we're right over uh, somewhere around here. And yeah, we're going to simply aim for the red obstacle. Right. And then we're standing here, and now we're going to jump shoot over the edge. Ah! Yes, that worked out great. So another two shots, and then a third one for victory. So we have done the first hole in five shots. 
Now I really like this second hole that Cub Fan has made because it looks really kind of impressive but it's also quite simple in nature. There isn't too much to think about other than this first trick shot I believe. So we're going to go for it. We've got to try and aim it over here and I imagine when Cub Fan was building it he tested it a bunch and it might be that you need to take two shots here to get it but my guess is probably that we need to jump and aim upwards Although then we might aim too far and land on the green. Let's see how we do. Okay, that's kind of perfect. That's that's pretty much in the middle of that block. So let's go stand there. And now let's do our very best to get it all the way over. Come on. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Close yet far. Okay, well, that's two shots so far. I think I'm going to just sort of aim this so we hit the edge and then go across. So shot number three. I'm trying to keep count here. Ooh, that's just enough to shoot over this slab if we can. Yeah, I think we're going to have to aim it right over the slab. Okay, shot number four. Bam, into the water. And... Ah. Oh. So if you aim it into the water from a different direction, it probably does a little bit better. Anyway, shot number five. And it goes up top. Oh, just in time. And it almost dispensed it straight into the hole. So for this one, our score is 6. That brings us to a total of 11. The next course was full symmetries, and I just love the layout of this. It's so cool the way it's sort of submerged and part of it is above ground. But anyway, the strategy here was to just try and make uh, a bunch of shots, really. And first of all, I tried to nip my way around the corner, avoiding the obstacles. But then I decided to actually embrace them as they make getting around the corner a little bit more guaranteed, so to speak. So maybe I could have done this slightly more efficiently. But where I really fall down is in just a moment because everything's going good. And then my shot hits the corner and it bounces off to the side. And I think that cost us a point. This next one is also by False, and I really like the layout here. First of all, we go down, and there's actually an obstacle that's a little bit hidden. Then you go around the corner here, and you can make your way up through this water stream. This one here, though, pulls you downwards, so you would avoid it. And then at the end, there is this. Now, I'm not sure what the advantage to going all the way across is, but up the top here, there's just a bunch of obstacles in your way. I think it makes sense to actually come up to the top straight away, get that done and just come down the side here and then you make your final shot over the edge into the hole. Now I've been thinking if your shot landed somewhere down here you could possibly get your ender pearl over to this bit and then you could totally scumbag it and shoot over the edge and cut off a lot of shots. Now we talked about this in a previous episode how we didn't want our golf course to be treated that way and so we should play with respect. I don't think False intended for that to be possible at all so we're not going to even try and attempt it but of course it would cut off a lot of shots if you could pull it off right. Anyway my first thought here is that you'd expect that to roll all the way down to the bottom but this isn't like reality this is Minecraft physics so when the golf ball falls over the edge it's not going to gain like any extra momentum so yeah it takes a couple of shots to get down here now we're going to go straight for the first water stream i think that is a good strategy and we've got it i'm also not keeping count very well is that our third shot i'll uh, i'll tally it up properly after the video so yeah where was the golf ball actually i don't know i'm going to stand about here and we're going to aim over the side and yep we didn't hit an obstacle that's really good so let's pick it up from there throw it again straight over to the to the curb and then around the corner we go it'd be nice if these things could bounce off of the uh, the sides that would be really cool maybe a little bit of a mistake there that might be costly probably not i'm actually going to go for that rather than the obstacle there because standing right at the edge here we should be a little bit closer can we do this one more shot come on that looks good yes we got it wonderful we did that in eight my friends i feel good about that score and now we go up the water stream take a walk around the park which we recently built to the next hole and this one is by false as well i've been saying all season that false is the mvp she's built so much stuff to contribute to everything this season and uh once again, she's built three of these, which is fantastic. So thank you, Fools. This one over here is relatively simple. So I think we're going to use the replay mod on this. You can see we've got a hill to go down with a couple of obstacles. And then there is this straight part here 
where I think my strategy will be to go straight through the middle. And then there is a simple shot here down into the water stream and that just takes you up to the top where the hole is. So I started off trying to get the best angle possible out of this very first shot, which I think we did pretty well. And then this next one, if it had gone just a little bit further, it might have slid down onto that obstacle, which I decided just to throw my next shot onto so we could go straight through the middle here and avoid the slabs on either side. And then this, you'd expect it to be one shot because it's going downhill, but yep, yeah, it took two to get it into the water stream. And then from there, it was a very easy shot to get it into the hole at the end. Next up we have Doc M77's course and this one over here I noticed has a par 5 score. That's interesting because this one looks really technical and difficult. So you start off with a bit of a tight angled shot going down to here and then your shot needs to go through and slide onto the slime ball in the middle and then go up the top there. I'm guessing though it could take multiple shots and then you the player activate it getting sent up to the top by standing on the pressure plate right so anyway if we climb up here we'll see that up the top you want to take a shot straight down the middle over to the other side to drop down to the next part of the course and then avoid this water stream bit now i stepped on these pressure plates and they started activating this redstone right here in fact now that i think about it does that stop them from jumping up oh have i broken something okay i fixed it <laughs> Anyway, I guess we'll see what happens when we get to this bit. Okay then, we are going to aim straight for that obstacle. And if we don't hit it, that's fine because we want to take that shot down the middle there. So let's stand right on the edge where it appeared to be and try and line up a shot. I think I'm going to jump this one as well. Oh, perfect. That was really, really good. Okay, two shots so far. We're climbing up the ladder to stand on the edge here and hopefully get it all the way across. So we want to aim down the very middle, jump and throw. Oh, it fell down. We're doing good. Par three, we're on par three. Okay, I think I just want to avoid those pressure plates entirely. So this shot will be a jump shot. Oh, and that looked good. That looked good. Okay, so I get to take my next shot from right on the edge there. Sometimes I think you just got to go for it. Oh, oh, yes, we got par five. That was amazing. Oh, that was so satisfying. <laughs> I thought I was going to get ruined on this one, but we did it really well. And we pretty much avoided all of this right here. Okay, that was just fantastic. I loved it. So it's not signposted, but I happen to know this one was made by Impulse SV. And I've been checking out the course, trying to figure out a strategy, and just figuring out what's going on over here. The redstone might be a little bit broken. My golf ball actually got stuck inside of this system. But if I understand it correctly, it's a trick shot. And if you get the hoppers either side, you go up to the top here where that yellow bit is. And if you make the trick shot through the middle and go onto this carpet, then your golf ball gets dispensed over here, which is like a shortcut. Then from there, I think it's relatively straightforward. You go down and around. There's a couple of obstacles and then this water stream at the very end. I think this one is going to be suitable for replay mods. So let's go to the eye in the sky and see how we do. So things started off with a little bit of maintenance as I realized that there was no orange carpets on top of the soul sand. But once I'd done that, I thought I'd actually goofed up my first shot a little bit. I wanted it to be more in the middle, but then the next shot recovered things as we actually make the trick shot here. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. Then it got spat out the other side. And again, I thought I goofed this shot because it landed on the obstacle block. But that turned out to be really good because the next shot kind of made up for it. And then, yeah, another one. And we got a hole in. Once again, I wasn't actually keeping count. This one was made by Mumbo, and there is a lot going on here. Um, there's a hopper down there. I don't know where that goes. Then there isn't one here. There's instructions to press a button to see where it goes. This is going to be interesting. We're just going to have to figure this one as we go, because look, there's all crazy water streams going on all over the place, and I don't know quite how it works. So the starting pit is a little bit different. Technically, I could stand there and shoot, so... I'm just going to go back by one, you know, the honor system and all of that. So first shot, in it goes, up it goes to the next one and the next one again. And then it's down in the bottom there. So we don't shoot, we press the button. Okay, does that count as a shot then? <laughs> I'm not counting that as a shot. 
Let's press this button and... Oh! Maybe you have to wait? Oh, wait, there it is. I saw it. Where's it going? <laughs> I don't know where it's going. Is it going back to the beginning? Where's my ball gone, Mumbo? I don't know. I think I know, actually. I think it went over here. Yeah, look at that. So we take another shot again. Okay, this, this probably does count as a shot. Otherwise, uh, this right now is not a shot, right? So I'm going to shoot now. Oh, should have waited a little bit more because then the slab appears. Okay, so the timing there is pretty precise is what we've learned. Okay, here we go. Yes, we made it through. Okay, and I totally don't know how many shots we've taken, but... Oh, is it supposed to fall down by one? Also, is there supposed to be a pig in here? I don't think it was. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my shot from right on the edge there. Ah, standing here, I understand. Okay, well, when do I want to shoot? Probably when they're retracting. <laughs> that felt good, but now I've got to take the shot from here. <laughs> okay, when they retract, it's not good enough. Oh, I'm losing my score so much on this one, right? Now, has my ender pearl been moved to somewhere else? Oh, I pick it up from here. This is where Mumbo wants you to take the shot from, I see. Okay, so now we're going to throw it a little bit sooner. Yes, that looked really good. Oh, we just about made it. Oh, and then it goes in. Now, that was satisfying, that last bit. I tell you what, now I know how to play this one. I reckon I could have got a better score. Hole number nine looks like one of the trickiest. There is clearly a lot of elements going on over here and multiple paths and ways to make your way to the hole at the very end there. However, I happen to be watching this video and I remember in emphasizing this trapdoor down here as being a shortcut. So I think rather than go all the way around here, we're gonna try and make the trick shot into that trapdoor at the side there. Between Mumbo and Cub Van's courses, there is this little walk around that I built to slim down the total amount of holes from 12 to 10 so we could get this done in time. And that means this is the second to last one. And I've been thinking about this. Your shot's just going to slide straight over that pressure plate and go into the water. So what you probably want to do is hang back and kind of take a shot into the curb. So let's shoot over the edge. And that, my friends, was perfect right there. Okay, excellent. Um, this shot right here as well, it's probably just going to hit the wall and fall down, right? But we'll give it a shot nonetheless. Oh my goodness me. Okay, right. Now it goes through there and it should come up somewhere around here. I think it's this one, but I don't see it yet. Okay. It should be some... Whoa, there it goes. Oh, and it goes into the yellow thing. Where does it go from... Oh, don't tell me it goes back down. <laughs> Cub fan, you... Oh! Oh, it's right there. Okay. Well, the next shot and we're in. But I wasn't keeping count. Oh, well, we did it. We did the trick shot. Okay. That that was awesome. <laughs> okay, then it's on to hole number 10. No idea who did this one. Oh, they should have put their name on a sign so I could remember. <laughs> anyway, with this one... Uh, as the creator, I don't know what the, the best optimal strategy is, really. Uh, that probably wasn't the best of starts. Would have been nice to have had it slid a little further along. We're now going to go stand right on the corner there and take our next shot. And that will go over into one of those. Yes, one of those obstacles. Okay, so this bit, you know, maybe there's a way to do this in slightly less shots than I'm doing is what I'm thinking. But I think most of the time it's probably going to be about... The same so then that drops all the way down to here and I love this area it is fantastic okay so we'll take our shot it'll slide into the water stream up it goes and then we do the challenge part where we want to avoid these obstacles and try and get that slime block at the back so I think what I'm gonna have to do is jump Ah, oh, unfortunately it picked it up if it was a little bit more to the left, it might have made it for the trick shot, but I guess that means we're taking our shot from there. It didn't actually fall into the hole. It kind of ended up on the side there, so... Ah, yeah, okay. I'm going to hate this. Um, how do I time this? Let's feel the rhythm. Now. Ah, oh, anyway, from here, then it becomes pretty simple because you're just going to, you know, go over to the side here and bypass it, which is fine. Oh, and that almost went through that gap. 
Uh, once again, like last time, I wasn't keeping count of how many shots I've had, so I guess this will get tallied up in a moment. I'm going to fling it over there, and then this next shot should be pretty easy as it goes up the water stream. There is a slight flaw with this, but I noticed, I think, yeah, look at that. The ender pearl is like sort of still in the water stream, so I'm just going to take my shot from here, run it down the sides. Not going to use the obstacles. Those are not in any way helpful, I believe. And neither is that last one either, really. It's no no problem with going over to the edge here. And then, that's it. We've done it. Right, now i got to go tally up my score. My friends, I absolutely love that. Our total score is 70, and I had an absolute blast playing all of that. And I reckon I could get maybe a little bit of a better score if I went back around and played again with my... Uh, knowledge of the levels. I think mainly Mumbo's was the one that caught me out because it was a little bit easier than I first realised. But we are not done with this project. Oh no, we have to now finalise everything and get it ready for other players. So it's just dawned on me that I need a lectern as we walk into the entrance here. This just can be a basic introduction to the game but also draw people's attention to the rules on the left and the scores on the right. Now, I can't think of much else that I'm going to put in these corridors, but at least there is space to read signs. So, mini golf by Asuma and the Hermits, the rules, shoot from where your ball lands, you can jump when you shoot, don't exploit unintended shortcuts. I'm not sure if we're going to put anything else here. I don't really need to explain how to play mini golf, right? And I could potentially put that in the book here. Now, over on the other side, we're going to have high scores, and I don't know what mine is yet because we've got to tally up all of the pars for each of the courses, and some of them have them, and some of them don't. So what we're going to do is go around again and figure these things out. But as you can see, I am signposting stuff. I mean, some of the signposts are already here, but I'm just sort of redoing them, and I've added in some golf balls. <laughs> Let's check them out. Regular golf ball. The green ball, the shiny ball, we've got a squashed ball, a forever ball, a wonky ball, an oval ball, the shell ball, and the egg ball. I thought that was a little bit of fun, so they could take those. I mean, we could have golfing clubs as well, you just wouldn't really use them. So, over here, what we're going to do is add a sign to the right of every entrance that's easy to read. This one says, hole one, the basics, which is a name I'm giving it, and that was inspired by Cub Fan. And then it says, by Asuma, par 4. So we want to make sure all of the holes have sight like this as you go in. And I got a 5 on this, and then I came back round and sort of played it again. And you can actually get a par 4 if you have a little bit of luck with the dispensing here, and you make a nice shot across the side there. It is possible to get 4. So I think what we're going to do is make the par... Uh, potentially the best that you can get. Now you can see over here that Cub Fan has called this one Hero, but it doesn't have a par. So the next thing we're going to do is figure out what's the best score you can get from this one. I never saw this earlier, but I think you're supposed to aim for that one first. That's kind of perfect, right? So then you would take your next shot from about here, and this is how I think you're supposed to do it. Now let's say we made that shot, which I think is what Cub Fan intended for. That would be two shots, and then we'd have our temporary Netherrack golf ball in this water stream going around the outside, going down to the bottom, and it looks like it's going to get dispensed onto there. So this is possibly a par four, unless you can get a hole in one from this. So we might call it a par three, but this is where luck just comes into it. Let's have a look. I mean, it is literally straight in line with it. Yeah, we're going to call that one a par three. Now the next one is Full Symmetries. It's in need of a name. It's in need of a par score as well. Now I got a score 10 on this hole, and I think I definitely could have done one better with that shot that hit the curb at the end. But I think also down below you can be a little bit more efficient going around the corners if you don't actually use the red spots. So I think I'm going to give this one a par 8. We're going to call this one Steady Ascend. One of the things you'll notice is that you start below and then slowly you kind of make your way up to that water stream. So I think that name's kind of fitting. Hole 4, three streams by false, par 6. I think I got a 7 or an 8 on this one and I've just gone back around and tried to make the most optimal shots and you can get one down to here and then you can kind of cut the corner by going over the edge there and you know you can actually land it on the green so having messed around with getting some of the best shots you could probably do this in six if you were quite lucky. This one is called Ocean View and since it already had a pass score I decided to just respect that and leave it at six 
and that's why it's called Ocean View because of that little viewing platform. The next one is Doc M's, and I called this one Trick Shots, which is possibly what I could have called Impulses one as well. It also had a par five already there, and that's actually the score that I got. So I think that's pretty fair and established. And then Impulses one, I got five on, and it didn't feel like there was a way to do it any shorter. But I called this one the Catapult instead of the Trick Shot, since you kind of catapult yourself up here and... Apparently I didn't activate that. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So next one is Mumbo's, and I was going to call it the Spoon, but then I decided to call it the Redstone Putter, because you have Redstone take a shot for you, which was a really cool idea, and we did this one in way less, or sorry, way more than four, but having a look at how it's laid out and how it works, it feels like four would be the most optimal amount of shots you could make. One thing I'm going to do, though, is just change this entrance bit here, so it's uniform with other ones. Um, we're going to make a little 3 by 2 orange area. There we go. Now the entrance is proper, like all the other ones. Entrance, starting point. And I also added a sign here. This counts as a shot, just to make it clear. Cubfan is currently online. And although we did this one in free, he said it was a par 4. And he gave it the name the other way. So that one's taken care of. And then my one last of all, I've just called the big one because it's got par 11. It's absolutely bonkers and that is quite tough to get par 11 as well. You have to successfully get that trick shot down below. So that's everything and I've written the book here as well. So it's kind of saying like it's a pretty straightforward game, right? Um, some basic instructions for various things. I just feel like I don't know what it is I might have missed out when explaining golf, you know? So hopefully all of this makes sense. Got the rules and over here I've got my score. So I got a score of plus 14, which probably isn't very good, but it's the first score on the board. And now what I'm going to do is gaze up into the sky and I'm going to put my total tally of score scores for each of the holes on there. So yeah, that was that was our game of golf today. We got one final thing to address. I have been a total and utter derp because over here when I drew my clue first of all I kind of got thrown off the scent as it sort of suggested trapping a place but you got to trap a person as well so let's grab a name. <laughs> I got myself. Well, you know what? That takes care of that one. <laughs> That'll do. I got myself a secret Santa, so... <laughs> Let's wrap up the episode here, peeps. It's been absolutely amazing. I hope you've enjoyed it, and you may not see another episode of Hermitcraft for a while. There'll be a video coming out sometime after this one explaining why. So I thank you, as always, for your support. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you not so soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.